and uh, hope you can hear me okay. Uh, these days when I go out to speak, I like to give four C's. One, I have a cough. It's not COVID, it's not a cold, and it's not contagious. So I'm, I'm sorry for the interruptions. If I have a coughing spell, this is one of the things I'm dealing with the, these days. Uh, so thank you so much for being here. I thought I would get farther than this. <laughs> okay. um, but we appreciate friends and family who have come, some of you from afar. And um, Connor, I call her mom. You call her sister or grandma or nanny uh, or Aunt Betty, maybe some of you. Um, but uh, thanks for being here. Uh, deeply appreciate it. Um, we are going to give you an opportunity after, uh, I'll, I'll tell you when, but uh, towards the end of this middle service, we are going to give you an opportunity. Uh, maybe you have a special memory of Betty that you would like to share. Uh, so uh, please think about that and uh, feel free to do that. And if you don't, that's fine too, obviously. Um, but. Um, um, not not asking you to eulogize her. We all we all know her great characteristics, uh, but maybe you just have a a, a fun story from uh, that you'd like to share, or a special blessing story uh, relative to Betty that you would like to share. So um, we'll do that uh, a little bit later. Uh, we'll have a word of prayer, and then uh, the Ferris girls have recorded some music. She loved, she loved hearing the girls play. And so a special treat, hopefully, if the technology works, uh, we'll, we'll hear from them. And, uh, and, then, and then we'll, we'll have a song together. So let's pray, shall we? Thank you, Lord, for uh, the opportunity that we have to gather here today. We are grateful, Lord, for times like this that bring us together. That's a good thing. And we're thankful for the life of Betty, and uh, we thank you, Lord, for uh, the opportunity to uh, honor you as she did uh, with her life. So we ask for your blessing on our time together. We pray that you will be honored and glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go ahead, John. I'm sorry they're not here with their instruments, uh, but... Susie couldn't come. This is recorded in Hong Kong, Alaska, Florida, and uh, uh, Colorado. So, anyway, here it is.
Thank you, John, and thank you, girls. That was a special treat. Nice to hear you playing again. Uh, pretty cool to record that that way. So, well, our, our time here today is bittersweet. It's bitter because someone we love and appreciate has been taken from us. But it's sweet because we know she is in a place so wonderful that we can't even begin to imagine how good it is. And sweet also because God, in his merciful providence, allowed Betty to die as she had lived, surrounded by family and friends who loved and appreciated her. We sorrow today, but not as those who have no hope, for there will be a resurrection of the dead and a reunion of God's people. And um, before I share some scripture, uh, I'd like us to sing Blessed Assurance. Uh, you have the words on the handout there. <coughs> we'll just sing a couple of verses. I uh, need you to sing out, okay? Um, sing strongly. Uh, this was one of Betty's favorite songs. Uh, so sing that uh, with me, if you will, please. Let's sing. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased upon. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect mission, all is at rest. I and my Savior happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day my Savior all the day long. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or precede them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And we recognize in the words of Holy Scripture, the Apostle Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower thereof falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And Solomon tells us in Ecclesiastes 12, 7, that the, the dust shall return to the earth as it was, but the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. And then we also recognize the truth of God's word in the book of Job, where Job said, And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. And then as we're told by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, 
it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. In light of these truths, how wonderful it is to know that while lovingly and tenderly, we commit the earthly tabernacle of our dear mother, mother-in-law, grandmother, great-grandmother, nanny, and friend to the earth. We do so with the assurance that because she had trusted Christ and Christ alone as her Savior, she is alive evermore with him right this moment. And further, because of this, the scripture which we read affirms that God shall at the last trump resurrect her body and all of us who are in Christ shall be raised together to meet the Savior at his visible bodily return. So with parting sorrow, far overshadowed by this glorious anticipation, we commend our loved one's body to the earth with the sure and certain hope of Christ's soon return. As the Apostle Paul continued to say in 1 Corinthians 15, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Right. So we would like to, um, a, a favorite song of mine and Judy's is this song, It Is Not Death to Die. Many of you maybe do not know it, but we wanted to at least corporately together uh, read the word <coughs> as printed here and uh, some point uh, if you're technologically savvy enough you can google it and listen to the song it's just a wonderful song with a wonderful truth but let's let's read this together aloud sorry that you didn't have a chance to rehearse that ahead of time uh, but let's let's read the words together okay ready it is not death to die, to leave this weary road, and join the saints who dwell on high, who found their home with God. It is not death to close the eyes long dimmed by tears, and wake in joy before your throne, delivered from our fears. It is not death to fling aside this earthly dust, and rise with strong and noble wing, to live among the just. It is not death to hear the key unlock the door that sets us free from mortal years to praise you evermore. O oh Jesus, conquering the grave, your precious blood has power to save. Those who trust in you will in your mercy find that it is not death to die. And what a blessed, wonderful, glorious truth that is. And so we say this, Mom, we praise God for you, and we surely expect to praise God with you. So we would like to go ahead and take a few minutes. Maybe you have a special memory of Betty uh, that you would like to share, and uh, please, please feel free to do that. Uh, even now, we'll take just a few minutes. Chuck. Yeah, I remember uh, mom, especially she uh, 
always uh, willing to embrace someone, reach out, help, encourage. Uh, no matter how many burdens she had to carry, but uh, Thank you, Chuck. Yeah? He also told me, Chuck, Mom said any time work needed to be done, you better put a wiggle on it and get that work done. <laughs> she was a woman of many words, and I'm still married because she taught me to make roux gravy. <laughs> lemon pie, lemon roll, those cookies that I made today, you know, I mean, just put, goes on and on. And I know most of you already know, we live with them for six Just months, and that's what I really have to Anybody else? It's always a favorite of all the nieces and nephews to have that short dress for a few years. But uh, I know she even kept my kids more or less away from because I always want them. And, uh, it was always handy to have her there until we moved to California. And every time she would come down to visit, all the kids, everybody, nieces and nephews, and all would call me, she ain't ready. And a lot of them were wishing they could come to this, but they couldn't. And uh, she left us, David. <laughs> we enjoy him coming out to see us. And, being with us and it's an inspiration for us to have David come at least once a week, a month, and so uh, we look forward to David being out and visiting with us. Well, thank you, Aunt Phil. Kind of a mm -hmm. continuation of what Chuck said that um, Mom had a lot of hard things happen to her in yeah, her life, a did. lot, and she was not defined by that. No, she no. Just it's not what people day. remember about her. I'm really thankful for that. I remember some mom always said, people do what they want to do, you know, and uh, with everything that goes on, you know, you, I just, you know, <coughs> I just remember that. And I remember something else that she said when she was, very, I don't know what in the world I did. Okay, I must have done something. And I'm thinking it probably was when she had five teenagers in her house and she was on menopause <laughs> and had to take pills. I did something, she said. I don't know why I didn't strangle you when you were born. <laughs> <laughs> I did something. And, uh, those, those are two things that I, I always remember. <laughs> well, I know why she didn't, because Nancy taught her how to drive when she was 60. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I lived through that. <laughs> I'd like to say one more thing, because I really believe her being a faithful wife, a wonderful grandmother, mother, and everything, she overcame all the time, everything. That's wonderful. Great, great heritage. Yeah, amen. Good. I had something to say. Okay. Oh, oh, one, one to two, twice, uh, <coughs> Aunt Betty came over to stay at our place. I'm uh, Aunt Snoopy's daughter of Aunt Diane. And they, uh, my <coughs> younger sister and Aunt Betty, both of them loved to talk, but they were one-upping each other the whole time Aunt Betty was with us. So we were having a lot of chattering going on between my sister and Aunt Betty, so. Cool. It was good. <laughs> yeah, they always used to say, Teal, you don't talk very much. I said, well, it's Snoopy, Betty, and Leola. I had, every time I'd think of something to say, every time they'd shut up, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> So they already uh, said it. <laughs> Something <laughs> sailed and you missed it. So we have to talk in between every time they got together. And Aunt Lil and Betty could tell corn jokes, chicken jokes, every kind of joke you could imagine. And they could go on for over half an hour and not stop. <laughs> Richard? Yeah, I remember we had to talk some stuff and and uh, when we always go down to Dr. Ferris's house, she'd always say, uh, take the kids, go get the crawdads, and we're going to have a crawdad feast. So every time we go down to Dr. Ferris, I'd bring my dogs and goats. And we all go and take the kids all down to the creek, get the crawdads, and bring them back up. She goes, go get some more. This ain't enough. So we get a big old, I don't know, like a big old 
she had a big old pot. We filled it all up. And she boiled the crawdads or crayfish. You're from Louisiana. Crawfish. I guess it's the other way around. <laughs> well, yeah, we had, a, we had a good time. It was a great time. <laughs> yep. I remember at Grandma's house in Wheaton uh, sitting on the ottoman while she was sitting in her wingback chair, which I always remember her sitting in. And she braided my hair into tiny little braids with these colorful rubber bands while we watched the sound of music while my hair was wet. And then the next morning she would unbraid it and it would be all frizzy, which was great <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> but I remember also listening to Annie and other, uh, you know, musical theater in the car with her and grandpa and uh, loving that music. And that was probably some of the first times I was exposed to music like that. So, and I also remember she helped pay for my first piano that her and my parents went in together for it. So I was so grateful to her. So our friends Fran and Ralph and their son Todd from Oklahoma made it. Good yeah. to see you. Welcome. Yeah, so, um, we were just sharing some stories about Betty and uh, Fran and Ralph were, have been friends with the family for more years than any of us probably care to remember. Uh, but don't know if, if, so we're just sharing some stories about Betty. Didn't know if you guys had uh, something you wanted to share or not, but um, that's what's happening right now. So glad you could make it. So. I love how Elizabeth. popular Nanny was because us four Ferris girls might have, you know, guys interested. And so after church, um, they'd all congregate by the coat rack and visit with Nanny to get on her good side. Well, long after their interest in us faded, they were still at the coat rack talking to Nanny because she was just so fun. Everyone just loved her and started quoting all her quotes slower than molasses on a doorknob in January and just all the stuff that I can't pull up right now, but it'll pop up here and there. So I really just loved her. And I love how um, Nanny's character and the family that she raised, um, when she started Nanny and us, we just gained a whole new family. And it's kind of crazy to think about, you know, just that we're not related to you, but we're family and that's really precious. Don't forget to keep come visiting. I want to add to that. So, uh, I'm married. Uh, we grew up with, with Ann and Max and Heather and Angelo and um, such a great childhood. We had so much fun with all the crawdads and creeping and pot creeping and all the pizza nights and Silver Dollar City and the yellow youngins. Um, but we didn't meet we didn't meet Judy and, and her boys until a few a few years later. And I remember Nanny talking about her grandkids. I'm like, you have grandkids? Because we thought of Heather and Max and and Angela is like part of our family. <laughs> and I, I, I have to admit, I felt a little threatened, but then after I got to meet you guys, part of our family too. So thank you all. So speaking of Silver Dollar City, um, one day we loaded the Ferris van with the Ferrises and Max and Heather and Ann and me and Judy and our three boys. Not sure if there was anybody else or not. Went down to Silver Dollar City you know, paid the fare. We walk in, and there's a there's a fence in the entrance area. And it has a knot hole in the fence, and there's a sign, you know, scrawled on the fence that says "No peeking in the hole." When we walked in, Betty walked right over to that hole and bent down and peeked in that hole. And all of a sudden, across this whole court, courtyard, you hear this voice yell, "Lady!" Can't you read the sign? <laughs> and hundreds of people in the area stopped what they were doing and looked. And mom stood up and she had this look of just absolute guilt on her face. <laughs> and Deputy Catfish walked over and wrote her a ticket. Oh, and some of the grandkids, I think, thought that she was going to be hauled off to jail right then and there. I was so scared. I was like, oh, not my grandma. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty funny. At the end of the day, when we left, all of the characters are standing at the exit, lined up, saying goodbye to everybody. And there was Deputy Catfish. And I said to him, I said, Deputy Catfish, do you remember this lady? He looked at her and he said, I sure do. 
you were looking in the hole. <laughs> I love telling that story. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, I want to thank you all for being here today. <clears throat> One of the last times I saw my mom, poor dementia. Head. I thought about this all week. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, it's sure joy by all means. Anyway, um, we had time to pray. Uh, she'd come down as her yearly uh, visit down to uh, Texas. And uh, before she left, uh, we sat down and prayed 15, 20 minutes. But it was a prayer of grace. Please. Sharing her heart. Her love of family. Her love of me. Her love of God. That's the great thing about mom was uh, her true faith in all things Christ that uh, he's always blessed our family in a lot of ways you know we kind of take it uh, for granted God's grace upon us and uh, you know these days I, I look at it every morning and I uh, get up and I uh, take that time to give thanks to God for such a great mother that I had. You know. And today, you know, we lay her to rest, but uh, she's in God's kingdom. You know, I love her. I'm going to miss her. But I know in the book of Isaiah, it speaks of, of mourning for our loved ones. And it may feel like we're in, living in ashes. And rightfully so. Rightfully so. But there's that day to rejoice. Mom's in heaven. There is no pain. There is no tears. There's no fears. And uh, so today I ask uh, for all of us that uh, there'll be that day when we lift our horns up to the Lord and ask us to fill it with oil. And to rejoice. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you, David. Appreciate that. Good words. So, John. Hey, I, I, uh, very, very thankful that that uh, Ferris family was grafted into the <laughs> Ferris Lingle family, and I, I feel very, very privileged you, and and very thankful for that. And it was the fault of my wife in heaven, Christy, who. Uh, is they're having a really a good time yeah. now uh, together yeah. who invited her to be the nanny and the day before the Christie's death at Rebecca's birthday party there was a commissioning ceremony of, of uh, Christy and Betty and they were both very serious in what they were doing and it's I have it on record, but it's it was <coughs> astonishing what they ag agreed to, and Betty was completely fulfilled all that she had promised to do. She wasn't a paid caregiver; she was a, a beloved mother to these kids growing up, and did all that she could for them, uh, and played with them, and took them on hikes to Pea Ridge where they hiked for miles and they got uh, <laughs> mosquito bites and scratches and chigger bites all together. I, I, was, I was working and they were having fun. <laughs> and there was all kinds of fun that they had together that I missed out on, but I'm very, very <clears throat> thankful for Betty that she made it possible for that to happen. That was so, so wonderful. Uh, I had no recourse, so everything we I trusted to her, and and she completely fulfilled her, her, uh, not just a job, but her uh, 
commission that she had received and with incredible love and and joy so um, that's I'm very very thankful this music that you heard was a result of her hard work in making sure that the kids got to their lessons and did their practicing and she listened to them she enjoyed them encouraged them that's that's the only reason why they would have done this uh, because of Betty's encouragement so uh, because I live you shall live also is is what Jesus said and that's our our confidence that's our Amen. complete confidence at this time and our our joy and 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 our anticipation and looking forward to that time would we'd be reunited with her thank you Amen. You should have had you do the service, John. John. <laughs> it was so much better than what I did. So, yeah. thank you. So, yeah, I, I'll I'll say a, just a add on when he talked about hikes. We did a family vacation to Colorado, and John's family graciously let us use their uh, Colorado vacation home for a week. And uh, one day we decided to go for a hike up in the mountains. Uh, and Betty knew where we were going. She had been there before. She knew the trails. And uh, so she we just to we, know. We, <laughs> what, she claimed to she know. She claimed to, yeah. So uh, I just trusted her, you know. She never let us down before, and so we we parked at the trailhead that she said that, that was the place, and we were going to go up and find this beautiful lake up in the mountains. And uh, multiple hours later, we decided that we didn't really know where we were, and the best thing we could do was turn around and hopefully follow that same trail back to the van and uh, it was a long hike but it was a good time, we had a good time. Yeah. Uh, she and I tell you she's she was an incredible lady she she was kind of fearless uh, the things she would tackle we, we actually we went to family camp one year back in the early 90s and mom went with us and um, uh, we decided to go whitewater rafting and she went and she was in the front of the raft, and the, the, the guy that was in charge of our raft, he said he thought she was the oldest person he'd ever had go on a whitewater rafting ride. I was glad she went, because I fell halfway out, and I think she was the only thing that kept me from going all the way in that day. So um, she, she was up for anything. I won't even try and tell you about the blind golf cart driving she did with my pastor's mom. Uh, that would be an interesting reunion in heaven, too. So. But anyway, somebody else, anybody else have a story? Uh, I, Angelo. I think my, my earliest memory of Grandma was down in Texas. And uh, I think it was like the first time I was away from my mom for a long time, maybe the second time. Um, that's another early memory is being at the Ferris's house and the giant windows and I stayed with you guys a little bit. But we were down in Texas and I was homesick and I missed my mom and I was crying. <laughs> And uh, I just remember her holding me in her arms and giving me a Snickers. And that did the trick. Um, <laughs> I stopped crying. But and you hear everybody's stories. And uh, you know, I think about that story. You know, there's this kind of a common denominator. And that's a life of service. I mean, how often do you think of grandma taking? It's always grandma giving. Um, and I think that's a defining legacy of her life was how much she gave. And in another way how much she really got as a result of that maybe not in the way that most people picture getting things but I think this is a testimony to that right here people came from all across the country um, to mark the life the life of the servant's heart well said Angela well said thank you I just have one comment about church she was a giver but at church she always took over the nursery <laughs> we went to three different churches with her, maybe four, on a regular basis. We moved, but she would come to church with us, and she would be in the nursery helping whatever she could do. And she always was in the choir, too. I don't know how she could be at two places at the same time, but she managed. So and she sang beautifully. She, she was trying to teach me how to sing a different part. <laughs> That was like would have been a miracle. I think Heather might try someday, but we'll have to wait till we're in heaven. <laughs> I can't sing parts, okay? I sing bass now. <laughs>
Anybody else? Uh, Richard? Yeah, I remember one time, it was not too long after Christy died. It might have been a year after that. But I remember she was uh, getting lunch ready in the kitchen and, or breakfast or something. And uh, I said, oh, we're having a uh, cream of wheat. She goes, no, it's grits. <laughs> and so I was going to put sugar on the grits. And she said, don't do that. You can put butter on it, but don't put grits. <laughs> she goes, you might be a Yankee, but at least you ain't a damn Yankee. And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> she goes, you came back to the sauce, so you're not a damn Yankee. <laughs> That's it. I'll never forget that as long as I live. I don't think the rest of us will now. <laughs> Anybody else? Becca? So everybody's talking about how Nanny was such a good cook. And, you know, we, we got to eat her food all the time. It was great. But, you know, Dad one time, after we ate some chili that she had made, said, this is a surprisingly good pot of chili. She's just like, John, surprisingly? <laughs> and he started trying to backtrack. But she also would put him in his place sometimes. And she was in the kitchen making something once. And he came and started telling her how to do something. And um, she, she was, you know, lecturing him. And he suddenly, his eyes got big and he backed away. And then she realized she had a big butcher knife in her hand. <laughs> so I don't know if he gave her any more kitchen advice after that. <laughs> we got to share when we were at the memorial we did uh, last year for Grandma's birthday. <laughs> there it goes. Let's see if we can get it out. <laughs> One of my favorite authors. Dr. John Maxwell, big guy on leadership, personal growth, he's a minister, moved into counseling and business, but um, he says the best place. The best plan for personal growth is an example to follow. That's good. Thank you, Max. Thanks, Max. Anybody else don't want to cut it off too prematurely? Fran, were you saying you Fran? wanted to say something? <laughs> Fran? No, I think I said it all before. You could say it a little bit. <laughs> a story. I guess I, I guess the funniest thing I, she and I did together was made a trip to California together. And I did most of the driving. But uh, she did relieve me once. <laughs> And I had the crew sit for 85. <laughs> and she gets behind the wheel and starts off. She says, oh, friend, oh, friend. I said, pull over. I didn't take the cruise off. So I take the cruise off so she can drive. <laughs> I'm glad you both survived that. <laughs> hey, we did. <laughs> And she and I both said there wasn't another person we'd rather make a trip like that with than each other. Yeah. She was the best. Cool. Thank you. You were a great friend and you were a great sister. She loved you. Yeah. She loved you both. Thank you. Still does. <laughs> okay. I don't see any other raised hands, so.
let's pray and then I don't know if there's food left if you need something to eat um, but uh, I'm sure some, 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 some of the family is leaving for Florida tonight okay so some folks are gonna need to buzz right out but uh, others of us will be hanging around I'm sure to kind of help uh, clean up a little bit so and and to visit so again thank you all for being here uh, we deeply appreciate that um, let's pray shall we God thank you for uh, the day thank you for a day where in a special way we remember those men and women who gave their lives in service for our country Lord we, we would be mindful to give gratitude to you for those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for us so that we could have an opportunity like this to be here today and we thank you for those men and women who currently are serving and we thank you for those men and women who have served many of whom are right here with us today uh, we thank you for them and we thank you for Betty and we thank you for her testimony we thank you for her love for others and for her love for you and as Max shared for the testimony um, that she uh, and the example that she set uh, for us Lord may we learn from that now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his life, through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen amen God bless you all. Yeah, we need to just Just so y'all know, there are lots of uh, extra copies of Betty's obituary. If you want to take some copies, uh, if you want to take some copies home for friends or family, feel free to take as many as you can use. Thanks so much, folks. Have a good day. Thanks. We would like to get some family and group pictures of everybody. So. Can we have you and Dad and Uncle David and Aunt Nancy around Grandma's? Yes, right.